Welcome to your UA Light Celestial Insight. Welcome to the channel. So March is considered this month of emotional processing and not just renewal and rebirth for so many reasons. Although it is a month of dynamic renewal and rebirth, okay, for so many reasons. Not only is March the anticipated month where we celebrate the astrological new year, Aries season, and the spring equinox, which falls in the new moon in Aries this year, but March 2023 features a lot of astral activity in Aries, in addition to many power planets changing signs after years and months of being in the same sign. There's Mars, which has been in Gemini for seven, seven months, changing signs, and the power outer planets Saturn and Pluto finally change signs, which are the most talked about powerful transits ushering in dynamic changes, defining the next 20 years for the world, okay? And so for a full astrology breakdown, including psychic oracle insight, on how Saturn and Pluto are expected to bring changes in the world and in your personal lives, right? Um, you know, like higher lessons, spiritual advice on the sort of tests that these planetary changes will bring for you according to your zodiac sign. Check out the new video posted on this channel and linked below. But if you don't know, Saturn is the planet of karmic rewards for your efforts, for better or worse, and it forces you to be accountable, to mature, and to gain mastery, and it will do so by placing challenges and to find limitations in the areas of your life related to whatever sign and house it is in, right? So that you are forced to learn spiritual and practical lessons for growth. And it has been in Aquarius for the last three years and finally moves into Pisces on March 7th. But because Saturn was in Capricorn prior to Aquarius since 2017 and is the ruler of both, Saturn uh, being the ruler of both Capricorn and Aquarius, right? While Pluto has been in Capricorn, which is also ruled by Saturn, right, since 2008, we have actually been in a Saturnian age of rulership for the last 15 years, okay? So truly, if things have felt tough for you in a particular area of your life for the for the last 10 to 15 years right you're not crazy <laughs> and it is exactly because of this heavy saturnian age influence and it's been really hard for cardinal immutable signs in particular right and you know this energy has brought societal karmas to the surface right in a way that we can't ignore anymore so Pluto finally enters Aquarius on March 23rd, just two days after the astrological new year and spring equinox new moon in Aries, which it will form a sextile with, right? So this is a powerful new moon. And then two days after that, on March 25th, Mars finally exits out of Gemini after being in the sign for seven months, right? Since August 2022. So those tidbits alone just give you a taste of why Mar March's uh, astrology is hyped, is anticipated, and considered dynamic, right? Because it's going to bring some climaxes, some closures, and just some energetic shifts for some cycles to end and begin, right? And it'll launch us into some renewal, growth, innovation, and big changes in the world that really sets a trajectory, right, for this new year and beyond. So take a moment, give this video a like, and subscribe to the channel. Cozy in as we get into some UA light celestial insight from the stars, right? And the cards related to the collective astrology predictions, and then your individual horoscope and psychic tarot insight, right? On challenges, um, what you don't see coming, and spiritual advice for March 2023. So the energetic theme of March really is about us being at this crossroads, right? And where, you know, we're gonna experience illumination, crossroads, climaxes, and ultimately some karmic closures 
hopefully, right? Um, and we can think of March as both this month of emotional release and sobering reflection surrounding these important questions of how did you get here, right? And what happened to certain hopes and dreams and, you know, these also these moments of excitement surrounding where you will go from here and where you can go from here with all that you know now from the last 15 years of change, challenges, limitations, and hardships in your personal life, but also the world. The world has changed so much in relationship to these transits, right? And so it won't be a sort of neat linear process and just March being, oh, just a great month and da 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 da. You know, it's like, yeah. But, you know, many of you are already experiencing, you know, this sort of roller coaster of emotions and these sort of triggering experiences, you know, being at these crossroads. And it's a part of this collective energetic process, you know, of release and reflection and then some renewal and rebirth. And that will extend, you know, into April throughout Aries season, okay? And so this mix of experiences and emotions, you know, being a bit of a roller coaster is punctuated by transits at the beginning of the month, for example, where we begin March still in Pisces season, right, with Mercury entering Pisces as well on March 7th, where it's going to make a conjunction with Saturn in this critical degree of exiting Aquarius and entering into Pisces, right? And this is going to be that energy, you know, of like some emotional, but also some sober analysis and reflection about the past and you know your future and on this very same day you know this 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 sort of uh dualistic energy right it's also punctuated by the fact that on this same day venus in aries makes a conjunction with jupiter in aries at 12 degrees while jupiter is in this sort of two degree looming conjunction with chiron you know and chiron is the wounded karmic healer right and so this is happening and sort of setting the energy these first two weeks of march right until that uh conjunction between Jupiter and Chiron becomes exact on March 12th, right? And so this puts this emphasis, right, on potentially being emotionally triggered and having to transmute these like painful emotions and experiences and, you know, trying to see and accept and hold on to the higher wisdom that these experiences in the past and the present have brought you, right? And so from the beginning, March 2nd, through the full moon on the 7th, and through the end of the full moon weekend, which ends with that Jupiter and Chiron conjunction on the 12th, we have Venus and Mercury's conjunctions with Jupiter and with Saturn, and the full moon illuminations, which connects with Uranus and Mars, sort of gifting you news and insight or an experience that is perhaps surprising, emotional, and sobering in a sort of spectrum of lighthearted or devastating ways, right? But to ultimately bring you closure of some sort, right? So that you accept the truth of something and um, be emotionally and spiritually liberated to strategize how to move forward, right? It, and it, this could happen in a number of ways. It could be um, a conflict, an apology or reconciliation attempt that you never thought you'd get from a parent, a family member, or an old twin flame, right? Um, situations with a boss, and even an opportunity to, you know, 
consider your personal boundaries, your personal ethics, and your desires, right? And really be empowered in enforcing your boundaries and moving towards your desires in the future. It could be news about a mentorship or a partnership that has lucrative long-term benefits, or it could be news of a conflict, right? Related to boundaries being crossed and issues with ethical values and beliefs in relationships, right? This is energy that it could even bring you like a surprise marriage proposal, right? It could be even a financial gift or a financial proposition. It could also be news about an opportunity to learn and travel. This Jupiter and Aries transit is so duly connected to uh, learning and traveling in higher education, right? And so with these placements, March 3rd, 3-3, Right, is also an, an auspicious day to take action and initiate an opportunity for yourself by being optimistic, looking your best, and having an important meeting or shooting your shot and generally taking some important step toward some larger dream and, and steering your destiny. It's a good day for lighting a seven-day prayer candle and being in ritual to release old energy and to ground and welcome in new energy, right? For the next seven days, from March 3rd through March 10th, three days before and after the full moon on March 7th. And, you know, a time to really connect with your guides, the great mother who presides over the grace of Saturn. We are all about the divine feminine and the great mother here and for connecting with your higher self. So during that time, definitely spend time visualizing downloading and speaking what you truly desire for your life especially because with the full moon astrology we have the sun in pisces making a harmonious connection with uranus and taurus while it's also illuminating the moon in virgo right making the full moon uh sort of sextile with uranus right and with that in the mix it really suggests high spiritual psychic and creative energy um, and surprises, right? But the thing is, is that it squares Mars, suggesting, you know, possible conflict and even a fire-based natural disasters, um, literally in terms of what this degree um, is associated with, right? So take note of your own surroundings and the news around the full moon time related to fire-based natural disasters and um, any sort of fire-based emergencies. Um, so for more information on the full moon astrology and how it will be affecting your sign, take a look at the video posted on the channel for more details on how to really work with the energy of this Virgo full moon this week, okay? So this energy of illumination, crossroads, climaxes, and karmic closures initiated at the beginning of the month will really continue and build through mid-March between the 11th and the 17th with a number of emotional roller coaster transits, right? Including that Jupiter Chiron conjunction until we reach the energetic shift and the rebirth, right, of the new year and the new moon in Aries and the spring equinox, March 19th and onward through the last two weeks of the month, okay? But let's discuss that week, that tricky week of March 11th through the 18th, okay? So... We have the um, 11th being a day where there is a sextile between Venus and Aries and Mars and Gemini, and then Mercury and Pisces making a sextile with Uranus and Taurus, okay? And um, this is a Saturday that's actually really good for initiating important conversations, um, coming to agreements and resolves, possibly in your favor with any conflicts, from having increased confidence and resolve about what it is that you actually desire um, as a sort of result or um, 
resolve with some sort of situation. It could be, you know, um, you doing spiritual, creative, and psychic energy work. Um, it's definitely a good weekend for energy healing where people may be receiving um, energetic upgrades, right, in their um, physical, emotional, and spiritual bodies. Okay, and then, you know, this then the next day is that Jupiter conjunct Chiron, right? And that is that sort of dynamic energy. And um, to be quite honest, this Jupiter conjunct Chiron energy could bring so many different things. It could bring, you know, some sort of um, trajectory defining news or experience, right? Um, it could be some sort of breakthrough truly in a number of ways and um, definitely look at that Jupiter and Aries video to see um, more about this okay but it's also giving you know long lost twin flame reaching out to you all kind of things could be happening with that all right and then from the 13th through the 17th we have a little bit of a doozy here with the Sun and the Mercury Sun, not the Mercury Sun and Mercury <laughs> and Neptune, all making a conjunction with each other in the sign of Pisces, and then all squaring Mars and Gemini, okay? And um, then we have Venus in Aries, um, squaring Pluto and sextiling Saturn, right? And Venus is also moving into Taurus in the midst of this too, right? So this is definitely climactic and uh, frustrating energy, right? And any conflicts that are sort of looming, things sort of reaching a, uh, a boiling point, a point of illumination and being at a crossroads and potential climax, right? This could be stalemates and conflicts, being gaslit or emotionally manipulated by people like co-workers, friends, siblings, partners in love and or work, even teachers and classmates, right? Um, given that this is Mars and Gemini. So this could definitely be, you know, these encounters with, you know, people refusing to be accountable and honest about their deception or passive aggression. Um, and, you know, being in situations where you really have to seek to maintain emotional mastery and where people, you know, on, on all sides might be, uh, you know, not trying to compromise their beliefs in some matters where they feel that there is some distrust in the midst and there's tensions around, you know, values. And, you know, these matters may or may not be involving assets and property ownership and, you know, um, People just trying to argue their case about what they believe they deserve, right? And it just really can be emotionally triggering and confusing. Um, and, you know, where you may be confused about what best actions to take. And that just ble bleeding over into all areas of your life, feeling confused in your daily routines, what to do in these interactions, and even questioning your goals and your direction in life. And... You know, it's just emotional meltdown energy. And, you know, these experiences could interfere with other more creative and uplifting ways you desire to use your time, energy, and attention. You know, especially because, again, it's this mix of opportunity, um, you know, in addition to just emotional turmoil. And so the advice with these uh transits right during the middle of the middle of march is you know mercury is going to be squaring mars but it's also going to be sextiling pluto and then venus is going to be squaring pluto but it's going to be sextiling saturn right and so karma is really involved here and cosmic order and you know there is a sort of advice here to take your time and responses if you can you know respond to things after or around you know the new moon and really stick to facts and be calmly assertive if you must engage stand your ground and resolve something um 
there's a higher chance of being more empowered, emotionally stable, um, and supported in steering your outcomes um, later, right? And then um, also wait, disengage, and also don't take bait, you know, um, being baited into any sort of emotionally manipulative circumstances and, you know, with people who you just know are just not going to be honest and take accountability, right? If you can, if there is some situation where you can, go around, talk to higher-ups, talk to senior managers, right? Because it's, it's really this tricky energy um, where it's like, either you're going to wait, either you're going to be able to handle things with emotional calm, or you're going to disengage, or you're going to want to burn it all down, okay? <laughs> so... You know, that's that's really the mix, right? So um, when Venus enters into Taurus, you know, we'll begin to feel a bit more grounded. Um, there'll be more of a focus on pleasure, self-care, beauty, comfort, and, you know, thinking about your financial security and stability. With Venus entering into Taurus and um, there being that square with Pluto and sextile with Saturn, this could mean a number of things. Um, someone could be trying to earn your love or your business um, by showing you how they've changed, matured, or what they have to offer. And this could just be energy of resolving some financial, legal, and even tax disputes and making some sort of financial decisions in the interest of your long-term best interests, right? This could be dealing with banks. This could be dealing with, you know, just institutions. This could be um, having business negotiations, right? And in general, this sort of configuration there is definitely giving something related to fintech, digital banking, digital currencies, cybersecurity with digital banking. Um, I'm thinking that this could even be a time where we hear something on the FTC decision on non-competes, right? Um, definitely check out that Saturn and Pluto video um, regarding some of the predictions that I had related to the astrology and how that's going to manifest in politics and governmental things, right? And in general, related to that, um, this astrology could mean a number of things in terms of global and political events. And I just want to touch on really quickly the Mercury and Venus conjunctions at the beginning of the month, and um, then all of this energy that then transpires the remaining of the month. It could illuminate. Um, you know, a lot of news about national leaders, like some sort of breaking news, right, about a national leader. Um, this could be a time where there is more aid that is able to reach earthquake victims. Um, there could be more national news coverage and discussion about um, consensus being reached um, and acknowledgement about the chemical and gas leak origins of COVID. Um, that's kind of in the air as a sort of controversy. And then there's also controversies of Korea's nuclear bomb testing drills with the U.S. That could uh, get more attention in the news. And uh, especially given that the full moon is emphasizing something related to fire um, and maybe um, natural disasters, just something, something with fire, right? And, and uh, certain things in the news just gaining a lot of traction and attention, right, with these Mercury and a Jupiter conjunctions and the Venus and Jupiter conjunction, Jupiter and Chiron, all of these things, right? So there could also even be anger and outrage in current legal battles and the pending decisions around student loan forgiveness in the U.S. and just more continued issues related to education in the news in general. And this is courtesy of, you know, the square with Mars and Gemini that is being highlighted in those um, configurations. All right. So now let's get to the last two weeks of March. Okay. So we have Mercury um, and the Sun entering into Pisces on 
the 19th through the 20th, and then that new moon in the spring equinox at the critical zero degrees, right, happening on the 21st. And, you know, this is a major new moon because of the critical degree, because it's also in a sort of loose conjunction with Mercury and Neptune, and also sextiling Pluto in that critical degree as it's entering Aquarius, right? And so um, it's really that energy that brings in all the newness. Um, it's a powerful new moon for manifestation, confident action, right? And so stay tuned for an upcoming video where we'll discuss more about the new moon astrology and how to best work with the energies and um, any particular predictions for the signs, right? And so in the meantime, take a look at the video that goes into more detail about the Pluto and Aquarius transit, right? How that's going to be powerfully changing things since that new moon is going to be aspecting Pluto and Aquarius, okay? And then on the 25th, just two days after Pluto entering Aquarius, we got Mars finally changing signs, entering Cancer after being in Gemini for seven months. And this is a welcome energetic change, but Mars does not like being in Cancer, okay? And Mars in Cancer is also a recipe for emotionally manipulative energy um, and passive aggressive behavior. But the thing is, is that there can perhaps be more emotional tolerance in your dealings with people, right? And you being able to sort of channel your um, emotions um, to reach outcomes and results that you desire, right, in your communication. And then um, between the 26th and the 28th, we have Mercury um, in Aries, um, becoming visible and then also making a conjunction with Jupiter and this means that it is such a great time for starting new things launching new things it's great for marketing this could be a time where you're receiving great news clarity right on your directions with long-term goals and plans even you could be receiving information related to visas or spotting new opportunities related to international travel or relocation or even study or work abroad opportunities right and um, I mentioned in my Jupiter and Aries video that this could be a particular conjunction where there are perhaps some announcements with more countries instituting nomad visas um, and then this energy is good for submitting applications and pitches and receiving news on applications and pitches and generally a great time to put your best foot forward and make long-term plans but also to you know be confident and enterprising but also realistic in your plans and to understand that there could be unforeseen circumstances that arise um, that you may not be able to plan for immediately, right? So don't overcommit, don't overpromise. Um, do what you can with what you can with what you know. <laughs> but this Mercury and Aries conjunction with Jupiter is happening as Jupiter is also becoming invisible, right? So again, there could be unforeseen news and circumstances, right? And then we end the month with Mars and Cancer trining Saturn and Pisces and Venus and Taurus conjuncting Uranus, okay? So this is... Um, the Mars and Cancer trine with Saturn and Pisces in particular is really about being able to channel and express your emotions and ideas to reach people in an effective way and to really kind of attract outcomes and long-term results that you desire in your work and love relationships and in your career, right? And um, it's just, it's good for emotional stability and emotional determination and resolve with something, right? Cancer is a cardinal water sign, right? And Saturn and Pisces is a sort of stabilizing influence, right? For thinking about how to make your dreams a reality, okay? And then with the Venus and Taurus conjunction with Uranus, this is surprises, right? This could be surprises in finances and relationships. So it's definitely good for making sure that you're aware of your budget um and um this is also energy where you can meet new people 
um, where you could get new ideas about something creative, right? Um, and that you could do business-wise uh, related to fashion, beauty, the beauty industry, um, even music, um, something creative, right? And so, you know, Uranus is all about um, innovation and um, getting ideas, right? And then one of the things I forgot to mention is that, you know, both of these, Mars and Cancer, trying Saturn and Pisces with Venus and Taurus, conjunct Uranus, it's like this could even be like breakup and makeup energy, right? And then being stronger in the long run from learning some kind of lesson, right? So it would be really interesting to just keep a watch on kind of what transpires for you synchronistically along this time. We're going to get more things moving into Taurus. Um, so definitely... Uh, take note of anything related to finances and relationship that begins to kind of sprout, you know, in your life around this time. And so, so to wrap up this collective reading, um, I received some channeled angel number messages um, as some spiritual advice, right? And the numbers that I got were 1133, which breaks down to eight, um, and the number 511, right? And eight in particular and 511 are really sort of emphasizing that March and also what these transits are really saying is that it's a month of renewed karma that your actions have the potential to renew your karma right in a number of ways it could end karmic cycles um but it could also even extend certain karmas right depending on your actions and so um that's also what saturn and pluto are really all about okay so it is just being really emphasized here so i'm going to read the um, sort of spiritual understanding of the angel number 511. And a five is a number that is all about making positive life choices and important changes and about personal freedom. And it's about having to be adaptable and resourceful and to stay motivated to make progress. And Similarly, the angel number one and master number 11 are also, you know, these numbers that, all, that are all about portals of newness and beginnings, um, inspiration, and, you know, um, manifesting, right? It's about spiritual awakening and development and about us connecting to our higher selves and our divine life purpose and soul mission. And so 511 is this message from the angels, from the divine, about the auspicious changes and new beginnings in your life. These changes have come about through your intentions and actions to better your life and incorporate a more spiritual approach. This is also a directive to incorporate a more spiritual approach, I'm getting, right, as you deal with any of these um, circumstances that surface during this time of karmic closure, right? And so the angels encourage you to make changes per your soul's promptings and intuitive urgings. 511 suggests that some karmic life changes are ahead and occurring in your life right now. And so your angels Angels want you to remain courageous and positive throughout these transitions. They support and surround you with love and healing. And this number appears when it's a message that your intentions are manifesting rapidly, right? And that is absolutely related to um, Pluto being an Aquarius and Saturn being in Pisces, right? So therefore, keep your thoughts and focus positive and optimistic. Maintain a positive attitude about the changes happening in your life. And it says, old and negative habits, patterns, and beliefs are being replaced with new, more positive ones. And this attracts and manifests further positive energies and opportunities for you. Go with the flow okay so that is the sort of spiritual advice for the collective and we're gonna now get into your personal horoscopes and tarot psychic spiritual advice for the month 
Dear Leos, I'm getting so many different scenarios from the cards in terms of how the astrology could apply and be playing out for some of you. So I'm going to run down these scenarios and I'd love for you all to leave comments and let me know what resonates for you. I'm getting one scenario applying to some of you with or without children where you are reflecting on your life from childhood to now and how the death of someone in your family or conflicts in your families related to money, infidelity, divorce, and values and beliefs about spirituality, religion, sexuality, and marriage all had a big impact on your choices in love and career. Whether these led to certain choices or led you away from certain choices, whether these led you to confirming or rebelling against some of these beliefs consciously or unconsciously. And, you know, I'm seeing an adult reflect on this experience you had growing up and having to even potentially navigate familial or societal rejection and abandonment even. And where for some of you, you're thinking deeply about these things in a way of taking stock of all you've overcome, all you've accomplished, all you've rebelled against, and, all, and what you are about to embark on, right? While on the precipice of reaching a new milestone in your career, um, that may include travel or research. For some of you, you're thinking deeply about these things while being at a crossroads in your life regarding some decision you are desiring to make for personal and professional fulfillment and independence that will change the dynamics in your family, in your love, or in your career relationships, and even put you at a great distance to them or even in these, right? And I'm definitely getting this theme of making a brave decision in career and or about a long-standing familial romantic a collegiate or even business relationship that will have uncertain reactions, right? And uncertain, but long standing consequences and effect on your finances, your assets, uh, children and young adults, and your public reputation, right? And there's this looming question and theme of potential irreparable damages, okay? And this theme of choosing yourself versus others and sacrificing your desires um, and not letting fears of public reputation and public opinion influence your choices, right? And, and this is absolutely sort of exacerbated by the fact that, you know, Saturn is exiting Aquarius and Pluto is entering Aquarius and in general, Aquarius is your opposite sister sign and the opposition between your sign and Aquarius is truly all about this sort of tension and dilemma of choosing the self versus other, right? Sacrificing your desires for the collective um, or choosing the collective over and, and some, some idea of a greater good, right? Over what you feel are even your conflicting personal desires, right? And, um, that's definitely what I'm getting. Some of you who are a parent, you are thinking about a no contact and unresolved failed relationship with your child's other parent and how that may affect the child. Some of you who are a parent, you are thinking about a no contact and unresolved field relationship with your own child, right? Where, um, similar to what I mentioned before, conflicting personal beliefs and values about spirituality, religion, sexuality, choices in love and career, um, held by you or, you know, your co-parent or your spouse has really pushed your child away and, and actually was discriminatory in some sense. Maybe it was them coming out as queer, trans, or a choice to not go to college, or them making some sort of taboo career choice and chasing their dreams in your eyes, right? And I'm definitely overall just getting this uh theme of there being some child or young adult, right, who escaped the home, who fled abuse, made a big 
exit and move far away and is no contact, right? And they're being mystery around where they are and how they're doing. And they're being a strong desire on the parent's part to reach out and reconcile. Um, for some of you, this is about being in a mentorship position and some of these things having happened and there being this strong desire to reach out and reconcile, to try and contact them somehow, maybe through social media and not knowing what to expect. Okay. And, you know, we have the injustice card here and um, the judgment cards here and also take action and expectation. Some of you, this is about you witnessing, learning from, and being inspired by the resilience, creativity, and rebellious bravery of people in like the queer and trans communities, you know, to follow your dreams. And some of you are raising awareness or becoming newly aware and educated of the various discriminations these communities face. Some of you maybe witnessed or played a part in some of these discriminations and are thinking about irreparable damages and reconciliations, right? Some of you, you are trying to figure out how to inspire a young adult or child who lives at home to discover their ambitions, to sort of leave the coop, to fly the nest, and finally be independent, right? Trying to get them to discover their dreams or trying to get to the root of their lack of ambition and how that is perhaps related to some sort of trauma, right? For some of you, this is you reflecting on, you know, long lost childhood and unfulfilled dreams and making a choice to finally chase some dream, right? And for some of you, it's going back to school for something. Some of you, it's leaving school or a career in academia. Some of you are thinking about a long lost relationship with someone who was always brave and chased their dreams and who inspires you to want to do the same. There's definitely this scenario of someone trying to save enough money and wait for the right opportunity to perhaps leave an abusive marriage, a business relationship, or even a contract. Um, there's definitely, definitely something here about um, someone wanting to end a relationship, but there's like some sort of risk, assets, or even children involved, right? And, you know, this could be because of infidelity, betrayal, and injustice, some sort of crossed boundary, and maybe not wanting to put the the child in a scenario of growing up without contact with their other parent. Um, and, you know, I'm getting for, because your 10th houses of career um, is highlighted in addition to your ninth house and your 11th house in the astrology this month. Um, again, so much of this is related to trying to make some decisions related to career. And um, I'm getting for some of you, you're trying to schedule maybe a surprise launch or announcement of something on social media. Um, for some of you who run businesses where you have, where you have, um, products or services, what have you, whatever it is that you offer, this is about, you know, restock announcements or launching marketing campaigns and even tour announcements, right? And, you know, just trying to schedule something in a, in a right timing or in a way where there's a surprise launch or announcement or in a way where you stand out from competition, get great sales and reception, or even, you know, resolve some sort of supply chain issue. Um, and in terms of career um, and, and relationships, because you're a house of committed relationships and um, like shared assets, it's highlighted so strongly in the, in the astrology. I'm getting for some of you, you're suspicious with your business or love partner. Maybe you feel like they prey on your insecurity, your emotional wounds, or even your financial status in some way to emotionally manipulate you. Um, but in general, there is something in the cards here truly about there being this sort of unavoidable conflict and potential, potentially irreparable damage, right? And like trying to weigh your options and not being sure of how to resolve a conflict in your favor in a relationship, whether reconciliation is possible, whether you just need to leave, how to leave, like 
all of these kinds of things, right? And um, for some of you, this question of irreparable damage actually pertains to some worries about health and surgery outcomes. Okay, we have Pluto and um, your eighth house figuring very strongly in the astrology. And so um, health, surgery, these kinds of things have been looming. And it could be about your health, um, your procedure, or someone else that you know, that you love, that you care about, right? And, um, you know, this could be cosmetic or reconstructive surgery with something that has made you or someone else really unhappy or a health issue that you have dealt with yet that you've dealt with like in silence or even kept a secret for a while right where the surgery has pros and cons and is time sensitive and it kind of requires a decision but at the same time you don't want to make any sort of impulsive decision because it has long-term consequences right and it could affect others and um it's like there's no going back in terms of how um, some sort of procedure or health decision could affect your looks or even your ability to reproduce, right? And so um, it, maybe it's expensive. Maybe it will require you to travel or even depend on others for, you know, your recovery. And, you know, you don't want to be a burden or you have to take others into account with this, right? And in terms of the cards and the astrology here, you know, it's really saying to take action or in general, right, there's this sort of urgency related to needing to take action and also to really follow your instincts and take this sort of leap of faith, all right? Because if you look here, we have um, the take action noun card followed by the fool and then um, the knight of wands here, right? So there's all of this sort of, energy here about needing to make a decision um, and take action, but also to really follow your instincts and your heart here, um, because in some way, maybe the results could surprise you, right? And that is related to the fact that we have the expectations card here, and it says, um, expectation is a form of memory. Our past experiences color our expectations of future future circumstances and outcomes. And it says you are asked to release any form of negative expectations based on past experiences and center yourself in the infinite possibility of now. And then the take action card here says there is a clear and unequivocal message that action on your part is needed now. Manifestation is not simply a process of visioning and dreaming about your desires. It says when an opportunity is offered to you, you must also take action. And it says pay attention to the signs and move forward fearlessly. Okay. And so, you know, overall, there's so much here about confusion regarding a time sensitive uh, decision. But, you know, if you look at the spread, like there are no swords here either you know, um, which is usually associated with what it means to make like informed, researched, rational decisions. You know, there's just wands, there's, you know, the, the, the fool card, <laughs> there's um, the high priestess and judgment, you know, and so, so much of this is about um, feeling into your heart, your soul, and your gut in terms of what the right decision is to make. And um, for some of you, you know, you, you know what that is for you um, based off of what you know you desire, based off your heart, your soul, right? Your gut instincts. Um, but for others of you, if you don't know, right, it's, there's this really clear message here that it's important for you to tap deep into your intuition and your heart to make this decision rather than letting ego fear, you know, or, you know, going in circles, trying to endlessly calculate and avoid mistakes inform your decision, right? It's about instincts. And, um, you know, I mentioned that karma is heavily involved with conflict resolution and decision outcomes right now in the collective. And, 
you know, that is emphasized here with the fact that justice, the high priestess and judgment is here. It's like, it, and, and with Pluto being in the mix, Saturn and Pluto being in the mix and making these critical movements this month, it's like, if you don't make the decisions, um, if you don't make empowered decisions related to what you know is the right thing to do, like the universe is going to bring cosmic law down. Like, and that's like in the collective writ large right now, truly. Um, and in terms of the astrology specifically, I would say that with any decision to reach out to someone, whether it's breaking up or making up, <laughs> or any decision to like make a new start, take a risk and a leap of faith in career, or try to time the launch of something, or even consider favorable times for surgery. I would say that in terms of the astrology, definitely doing these things while Venus is in Taurus, um, from March 16th to four to to 411 or April 11th, definitely in terms of surgery, doing it while Venus is in Taurus, those things could be favorable. And then with any kinds of launches, initiations with reconciliations, um, conflict resolution, uh, you know, professional decisions and things like that. Also doing it after the 16th where after the 16th, then we have, you know, all of these dynamic sort of movements, um, related to Aries happening, right? Where we have the sun going into Aries, we have Mercury going into Aries, we have the new moon and spring equinox go happening in Aries, all of that after the 16th through the end of the month, where we also have Mars uh, moving into Cancer, which is a little more favorable for conflict resolution. Um, as opposed to Mars and Gemini, and then, um, you know, Mercury and Aries making a conjunction to Jupiter, all of this in your ninth house, which is all about launching things. It's also all about reaching out to people at a distance, foreign affairs, long distance relationships and communications, right? And um, even things related to travel, things related to uh, supply chain issues, um, product development, manufacturing, all of those things, right? And then on the 30th, um, Venus and Uranus making a conjunction with each other in the sign of Taurus, which is all about potential pleasant surprises, right? Which, which absolutely goes back to what expectation is talking about and what the take action now card is talking about too, right? And so I'm going to read the collaborate card and it says, sometimes we are called to develop our self-sufficiency, and this can be a valuable road to travel in the discovery of our unique and individual gifts. But this is not the same as trying to do everything yourself all of the time. This is not a time to go it alone. It is time to unite and work with others. Um, I would also definitely recommend looking at the Saturn and Pisces and Pluto and Aquarius videos. and. Um, also, the 2023 year ahead Jupiter and Aries reading, and also the year ahead spiritual advice video for the year 2023. Here on the channel, um, some of these themes are absolutely reflected in some of those videos, and it could give a little more insight that could be helpful for you if you are seeking clarity. Okay, and in general, um, you know, overarching the right, the advice here is just we in like we in the reading with the high priestess and the judgment card. So this is truly about you having to follow your intuition to do what you know is right in your heart and what you feel is right in your gut, what you feel is right in relationship to karma and cosmic law, like all of these kinds of things. Okay. And so I hope that it is a, you know, a month of clarity, resolution, and, um, finding some inner peace and, and, and inner resolution even with some of these big decisions that are sort of looming for you, right? In terms of really thinking about irreparable damage and taking a leap of faith in your life. 
Okay, so thank you so much for watching this video. Give this video a like, subscribe to the channel, especially to stay tuned for um, the astrology and your personalized insights for the new moon astrology that is coming up, how it could be affecting you personally and how to work with this dynamic dynamic energy okay um and leave some comments below in terms of how this resonates for you and um even some advice for your fellow collective of leos right some light-filled comments and encouragement okay and uh, join us here every day for our daily grace meditations to enhance or even begin your own daily gratitude practice for uh, meditation and motivation, right? And being aligned with your highest destiny. Take good care, Leos.